In this episode of Nature Inspired by Connie, we travel inside a woodpecker tree, visit a frozen beaver pond, do some fast forward vegan cooking over a campfire, and tell another story in time. Stay tuned. This is an old poplar tree. It's honeycombed on the inside. And he couldn't stand the force of the elements anymore and broke off. And actually, there are two trees that broke off. And here's the second poplar. And you can see that it's made perfect food source for a pileated woodpecker. And our comparison. Look how huge that is. I almost make a nest in there. This forest is easy to walk through because it's been replanted with pine trees. So there's lots of opening. The only thing that needs to be done is the young poplar need to be taken out so they don't kill the other trees. Onward to the next discovery. Here's another new beaver dam area. You can see the older trees he cut off before the winter. Through there is where he's built a terrace of dams. This is also to control the water on the other side of the pond. Still frozen over. Warm temps in the day, but still freezing at night. You can see where he's really cut off all the trees in this hall, except a couple, and dammed it up over there. Amongst all the dead pine and willows and poplar now. Maybe we can get a closer look, even though it's still frozen. As I'm talking, I'm thinking, why baffle out the wind? It's part of the natural elements. Definitely much bigger trees cut down here by this beaver family. Quite impressive, really, on some of these bigger ones. For a long ways. Come on over, fill up the stump, have a drink, and tell me your troubles. Here you go. 
Well, I think carving is relaxing because it has something to do with not having to clean up my floor. It's a great pastime while I'm waiting for the coals to make the fire. I think that's got a pretty good shape to it. Looks promising. The paint will really make it stand up. Very relaxing thing to do while you're waiting for your fire. Thank you, Howard. And Kevin Bluegill. I really appreciate it. Just another time for a campfire story. I, I knew a lot of stories about my dad and about my family and we've always done so many things. There's lots of miles on our feet. And I remember uh, after dad had passed and, and uh, you meet people that he grew up with and they said so many kind things. And one of them was a story back in the day when my dad would supplement his livelihood with trapping when it was acceptable back then. It's frowned upon now. Hudson Bay Company is pretty well a thing of the past. Before the times of snowmobiles travel into the woods and Chickshock Mountains and Quebec and the Gas Bay. He'd go for miles. And uh, he, he, he just loved being outdoors and he loved those challenges in winter time. It didn't matter. And uh, there was this group of three guys that that drove in behind one winter. And they were miles and miles away from anywhere. And while they were out after the storm, they came across these snowshoe tracks. And uh, they couldn't believe that there was someone out here. That, like this was crazy because it had taken them oh, quite some time to get out there with the sleds and the snow was deep. And they called it like someone had landed on the moon and just started walking. And they followed them because they wanted to meet this person. And they followed them until they met Dad. And they sat down and they had a little conversation. And from then on, they called him the Daniel Boone of the Gas Bay. And, and they were friends, they respected him. They admired him for his resilience and his knowledge of the forest. And I was quite honored to hear that story. It had been a story that I didn't know about. Some salt. And pepper. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, I got a craving for some ginger. Uh, hold on. Cherry tomatoes. And that goes. I'm going to stand a little bit. Okay, good. Al Dante. And it's not in yet now. Gonna add some beautiful crust, and you can see for all those things. 